tornadoes don't happen in the mountains. This is perhaps one of the most prevalent tornado misconceptions out there. Not only is this myth wrong, but terrain can cause some of the most drastic effects on tornadoes, spelling disaster for those in their path. No town knows this quite better than the Northern Appalachian town of Great Barrington, Massachusetts. If you live in this area, take caution. If you see threatening weather, definitely take cover. Memorial Day, 1995. It was a hot and humid day in the northeastern United States. This whole area was sitting in what is called a warm sector, or the area between the warm and cold fronts of a surface low pressure system. Well above, the jet stream of the upper atmosphere kinked into a positively tilted trough. This brought a belt of strong flow from the Midwest through New England. All of the classic ingredients were in place for severe weather, extending from central New York into western New England. Great Barrington is situated in an interesting geographical location. Nestled in the Housatonic River Valley, it is surrounded by the mountains of the Taconics to its west and Berkshires to its east. Further to the west lay the much larger Hudson River Valley, where the Catskill Mountains comprise its western wall. At a high level, such a varying topographical landscape can be disruptive to surface-based storms. In other ways, though, these geographical features greatly play into the favor of severe weather, especially when the environment is supportive of organized supercell development. The mid-afternoon saw storm initiation over the Catskills. The line of storms took on a northeast to southwest orientation, but moved due east. One cell in particular achieved dominance ahead of the main line, establishing a mid-level rotating updraft. Upon dropping out of the Catskills, surface southerly flow became more efficient in the flatter terrain. With that, a phenomenon known as valley channeling forced the surface winds to flow along the axis of the valley. All of this bolstered inflow into the storm, strengthening storm-relative helicity. The valley also possessed more moisture, promoting the storm to deepen its surface-based characteristics. The final piece to the puzzle came from the north, as storm outflow created a boundary for this particular cell to ride, maximizing vorticity where the opposing air masses collided. The orchestration of these ingredients within the Hudson Valley turned this supercell thunderstorm tornadic. The National Weather Service office in Albany, New York, issued a tornado warning for Columbia County. Ten minutes later, at 6.40 p.m., a tornado touched down. This F2 ripped due east from U.S. Route 9 through the southern parts of Hollowville and Martindale, before continuing into the heavily wooded Taconic Range. While trees accounted for most of the damage along a 15-mile path, a few homes sustained significant roof damage, and several barns were toppled. Five injuries were reported with this tornado, but the main show was yet to come. The supercell traversed the Taconics and crossed the state border into Massachusetts. In a similar fashion to the first tornado, the storm dropped into the Housatonic Valley, where favorable low-level ingredients promoted another round of tornado genesis. At 7.06 p.m., the main tornado of the day would touch down in Egremont along State Route 71. Tornado strength was rather weak at this time, with sporadic tree damage until reaching the northern end of the Great Barrington Airport, where a hangar was hit. It intensified from there as it closed in on the Timberland Heights nursing home, completely peeling off the structure's roof with 120 residents inside. The next mile was the most populated of the tornado's track, as it tore through the southern end of Great Barrington proper. A homeowner on Silver Street watched as a gray mass slammed into his house, throwing him 30 feet and knocking him unconscious. His garage was picked up and smashed while the house sustained further extensive damage. The historic Mahawi Cemetery had 180-year-old headstones overturned. Just south of that was the Big Y grocery store and mobile gas station. A semi-trailer was thrown into the shopping center, collapsing an exterior wall, while the gas station would be chewed up with more vehicles getting thrown. One motorist was injured when her van was impaled by a beam from the gas station structure. Just across from US Route 7 was the Great Barrington Fairgrounds. It took a direct hit from the tornado, completely flattening the grandstand and other structures on the property. The tornado crossed the Housatonic River and started decimating trees on the windward side of the 1700-foot East Mountain. While ascending, 
A widening swath of trees were shoved over as the vortex was pushed back up into the supercell, weakening the tornado briefly. Even so, the tornado traversed East Mountain uninterrupted, and the leeward side introduced an effect known as vorticity stretching. As the vortex descends down the mountain, it is getting stretched and pulling its diameter in tighter, increasing its rotational speed, like a figure skater pulling in their arms. Occupying the basin between East and Warner Mountains is the Butternut Ski Resort. Slicing directly across the middle of the ski slope, it brought hundreds of trees down across trails and several ski lifts, causing $2 million worth of damage to the resort. It exited Butternut across the northern ridge of Warner Mountain, as more vorticity stretching strengthened the tornado once again. Homes on Lake Buell Row were destroyed, as the tornado was now a quarter mile wide, now took aim at the Eagleton School. The Special Education Boarding School consisted of multiple residential and office buildings, all of which were surrounded by trees. Returning to the school along State Route 23, 28-year-old school counselor Sonny Choi is driving back 61-year-old staffer Leslie Elson, students Christopher Billido, and Vincent Verbal back to the school after a shopping trip in town. The tornado overtook the vehicle, ejecting Choi in the process as it was thrown. The school campus is hit right thereafter, as the roof is shredded off of the office building. Two of the three dorms are destroyed. The tornado crossed from Great Barrington into Monterey, threading between Lake Buell and Stevens Pond before weakening and roping out just south of the center of the small town, some 12 miles from its origin. Back at Eagleton, School officials are reeling in the aftermath. It appeared everyone on campus was all right until a bloodied and dazed Sonny Choi was found staggering along the highway. Still in shock, he states that the kids were still belted into the car, but doesn't know where the car is. Emergency personnel locate the car some 1,000 feet from the state route in a wooded ravine. The three remaining occupants did not survive. The wooded nature of western Massachusetts made immediate cleanup efforts difficult as thousands of trees had fallen in the path. The Great Barrington tornado was responsible for 24 reported injuries, 3 fatalities, and $25 million of damage with over 100 homes and 15 businesses significantly impacted. In the subsequent days, surveyed structural damage equated to an F3 rating on the Fujita scale. However, the car thrown from State Route 23 would prompt an official upgrade to an F4. While the rating is still disputed 30 years later, it remains the most recent tornado to be rated a 4 in New England. In the years following Great Barrington, research was conducted on the May 29, 1995 event to understand what role terrain may have had on the tornadoes. While observational data was limited for definitive conclusions, Correlations between topographical features and low-level supercell trends were found, suggesting that the valleys and leeward mountainsides played a role in the tornado genesis process. Further research in both real-world and simulated cases bolstered the idea that tornadoes descending leeward slopes intensified in strength. Western Massachusetts would see these same valley channeling and leeward intensification effects again in the Greater Springfield EF3 on June 1, 2011. Events like Great Barrington are extremely important to dispelling dangerous myths and misconceptions about tornadoes. They may not be as common in the mountains as compared to the plains, but the influence of mountainous terrain has proven to have drastic consequences.